Hey everyone, and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Angela here, and I know we haven't uploaded any videos in a few weeks, so we appreciate your patience, and we have a lot in store for you guys coming up. Today we are talking about Prince Harry's court failures, and trust me, there are a lot. I also have an update on Meghan's failed Spotify podcast, so stay tuned for the whole video. Let me know what other Harry and Meghan videos you guys want to see in the comments down below, like and subscribe for more, and without further ado, let's begin. We talk a lot about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle having the audacity on this channel. Whether it was Meghan's over-the-top budget during her short days as a working royal, or Harry acting surprised on Netflix that his family didn't apologize to him after he sold them out, it's always something with these two and it usually has something to do with them being inconsiderate or feeling as if they are too important for anyone else. And this was shown as Harry had the audacity to miss the first day of his court trial where he was going to be questioned as a witness, leaving the judge absolutely flabbergasted. His lawyer, David Sherburn, explained that his client was in a different category because of his travel and security arrangements and that those arrangements involved Harry flying from California on Sunday night after celebrating Princess Lilibet's second birthday, the court heard. Mr. Justice Fancourt said he was a little surprised that Harry was not there and he admonished Mr. Sherburn for causing a timetable chaos. Oh great, here we go again. Using the kids' birthday as an excuse and a way to hide from the truth. They wasted the court's time and everyone else who was present just because Harry thinks he can. First of all, different category? Really, there are over a hundred claimants involved in this phone hacking and illegal information gathering case, but it's Harry, who is practically a retired prince that has nothing else to do but sue the press, who is the one who's too busy to appear for his only job nowadays in court? We heard the birthday excuse before when it was Meghan using it as a reason as to why she didn't attend King Charles's coronation because it was Archie's birthday, which Harry assumingly missed considering he was at the coronation even though it was later revealed by Meghan's own camp that she was simply scared of the public reaction following her antics. But now we are hearing it once again as to why Harry missed a court appearance. It's always this theme with them where they are just so busy and so important they can't attend to real important things because of a mundane task such as a child's birthday. And listen, children's birthdays are important for sure, but a child who's what? two years old, isn't going to realize when their birthday party is a day or two after their actual birthday. Do you know how many birthday parties I attend or host where I have to move it a few days from the actual birthday to appeal to everyone's schedule? Welcome to the real world. But alright, Harry is apparently in a different category. In Harry's absence, something that was brought up in court was the topic of Harry and Prince William's rift, something that Harry's lawyer tried desperately to prove was always there and it wasn't because of Meghan. This is also another narrative that Harry desperately pushes, claiming that he and William were never close and Meghan had absolutely nothing to do with it. Sure, Jan. Harry complains that a 2003 article in The People deepened a bitter rift with Prince William, revealing that the brothers fell out two decades ago over Diana's former butler, Paul Burrell, to which Mr. Sherburn said, Even at this very early formative stage, the seeds of discord between these two brothers are starting to be sown. Um, question. Is the court case about proving Harry and William had issues, or is it about some sort of illegal phone hacking and information gathering? What is the relevance of trying to push this narrative that Harry and William were apparently having issues way before Meghan came to the picture? Also, siblings fight all the time, and when you go through something traumatic together, that can put a strain on your relationship, and losing their mother was definitely not easy on them. However, the way they want to rewrite history is crazy. And why, you may ask? Well, ding ding ding, I got the answer for you, and it's one name, Meghan Markle. Now I know you're probably like, Angela, stop being dramatic, it's not always Meghan's fault. But guys, this isn't my opinion, it's literally what Harry says in court. Later on when he had the respect to appear and take the stand, he said, I launched this hacking claim to stop press abuse of Meghan. Wow, you really are stupid, huh? His own words, aka, I'm suing the press because of Meghan, 
AKA, I'm doing whatever my wife tells me because she controls me and I'm her puppet. And it's funny because this wife of his hasn't even appeared once to offer her support. It's always him doing the dirty work for her and it's always him being thrown into the fire or as Megan said, thrown to the wolves, but she is nowhere to be found. That's interesting. Now, this is a theme that I also saw while covering their Netflix soap opera, which definitely check out my playlist on that. And this is a theme that we will elaborate more about in the Psychology of Meghan Markle video, which is coming soon. Now, there are a lot of reasons Meghan most likely pushed him to pursue this case. A, she genuinely has control issues and couldn't handle the fact that the free press was able to and did expose her. And B, how else are they going to get the money? It's reported now that Spotify canceled season two of Archetypes and they cut 200 jobs because their deal with Harry and Meghan didn't bring in the money they needed. There was absolutely no return on investment there and that's embarrassing. Speaking of Archetypes' failure, let me know if you guys want a separate video on that, but isn't it funny how Meghan was winning all these awards left and right and the episodes that literally no one could recall or get through were supposedly charting at the top of the charts and it was hailed as this ultra successful moving podcast that led Meghan to get many awards only for it to literally fail and get cancelled. <laughs> This is proof that Meghan and Harry tried to create this illusion of success, hoping they can manifest it into actually something successful, but they failed. And this is proof that the awards were bought and maybe if Meghan actually had the right intention of making a podcast that will make a difference and working hard on it, instead of having her producers do everything, her hard work would have paid off. But nope, she was too busy begging for praise and recognition. Back to the court case. The Mirror's Casey Andrew Green said, There is simply no evidence that the Duke of Sussex was ever hacked, still less that he was hacked on a habitual basis, and that, unlike other hacking claims which were supported by phone call data, Harry's case had zilch, zero, nada similar evidence. But it, you did this for what? Why not? <laughs> Why? Why not? Basically, where is the evidence? Something that I find absolutely bonkers is that when asked if Harry is aware of any evidence of hacking at all, he literally replies back saying no. Then he had the audacity to claim that it would be an injustice if he was denied victory in his phone hacking case due to lack of evidence. What? How would it be an injustice if you literally have not seen evidence of this taking place and you have no evidence? It would be an injustice for you to win on the basis of no evidence. Wow, you really are stupid, huh? And when he said no, he hasn't been made aware of any evidence of phone hacking, he states that that's part of the reason why he's here in court. So you have no evidence and that's why you're here in court? Presenting no evidence? What? The KC then said, you're presumably aware that there's not a single item of call data to your mobile phone at any time from any Mirror Group journalist. To which Harry replied, just wait, saying, in the land of total speculation, and continues with his conspiracy theory, accusing the newspaper of destroying vast amounts of evidence and using burner phones to hide their wrongdoing. What the hell are you talking about? He then went on to talk about his personal life and how he took a trip to a strip club and that there were disturbing reports in the Mirror Group headlines about his breakup with his first love and ex, Chelsea Davey. Speaking of Chelsea Davey, he mentioned her 118 times in court while he only mentioned Meghan five times. This led many to believe that he's still in love with Chelsea and saying that if they were Megan, they would be humiliated that he mentioned his ex in court over a hundred times. Meanwhile, it's Megan who has all the issues with the press, right? Why not mention the woman that you took on this case for? You know, it's okay to mention your ex if it's for legal purposes, but over a hundred times is a little excessive, especially if it wasn't relevant to the case at all. So I don't blame people for reading into the story and claiming that Harry never got over Chelsea. He also blames the media for his breakup with Chelsea and not the fact that Chelsea probably found him to be absolutely insane and did not want to put up with him. What do you guys think? Another thing that happened in court was Harry appearing to hold back tears after admitting I don't know 18 times when he took the stand. 
He also replied, I don't remember, nine times in the high court. When asked whether he had any call data to back his claims of phone hacking, Harry said, I wouldn't know. My legal team would know that. Doesn't a legal team brief their client on everything they know? And doesn't the client inform their legal team of everything they should know? The fact that he keeps saying I don't know or I don't remember, despite him launching this court case amongst others? Well, it's not looking good for him because he's being grilled as if someone originally took him to court and not the other way around. It truly leads me to question, what is the point of this court case if you're gonna sit here crying about how you don't remember and how it's the law and on top of that you have no evidence? He also told the high court that he decided to sue the press when he bumped into David Sherburn in France around 2018. What? I can imagine, casually bumping into a lawyer and, oh look, let me go and take on a whole court case with absolutely no evidence, all because I bumped into a lawyer when traveling. It makes no sense. He also says that before he spoke to lawyers, he had no concerns over any particular articles being the result of unlawful activity. And no, I was never shown anything. It was all contained within the palace. We all know that's a lie, as I covered in my past videos about Harry's court trial. Considering one of the palace staff brought a story that was about to break about him doing cocaine, and he gaslit the staffer, claiming it was a lie, and to tell the editor, oh, you're bluffing, I'll call the editor's bluff only to admit in spare later on in the same page that he was indeed doing cocaine. Lots of it. So we already established a long time ago that he's a liar and the palace was actually briefing him on what was being covered in the media and even going as far as killing any stories about him. Regarding his conversations with lawyers, he added, I think it was a discussion about how to find a way to stop the abuse and intrusion that was coming against me and my wife without relying on the institution's lawyers. It's funny how all of this and the institution and their lawyers and it was us versus them all started in 2018. So let me get this straight. You bump into a lawyer in France, you have this genius idea to sue the press magically in 2018 when you got married to a control freak that is Meghan Markle, who has not only tipped off the press, but was begging to get into the press before she found a prince to capitalize on, and now it's all the institution's fault? Meanwhile, you claim to have zero evidence to your story? Yeah, sure, sounds like a solid case. Well, that's enough absurdity for one video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Let me know if you want me to do a part two on the other bizarre things that he said in court. And if you want me to discuss Harry and Meghan's recent schemes, such as them sending a letter from the office of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. What office? What do you guys even do for work? Anyway, like and subscribe for more videos each week. Follow us on our social media. And as always, I'll see you next time.